So you need to be heading to wherever you're going to ride out Isaac as soon as possible. Let's go in depth now with Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross and Weather Underground. Dr. Jeff Masters. Okay, okay Nick, uh, we have uh, good new information, interesting things on the radar. Storm surge reports coming in. This is all happening now. It is underway. Let's get you uh, right to the numbers here because the most interesting number you've heard about the 80 mile an hour top winds. Pressure is still amazingly low for a Category 1 hurricane, but because it's so big. It's uh, below to sustain that, yes. Yes, for that big circulation. And moving to the northwest at only 8 miles an hour, which is as predicted, but what that means is this big circulation is going to take a long, long, long time to get past where it is. Right? That gives it extra time to intensify potentially uh, maybe another 5, 10 miles per hour as well. Well, because it's just over the water here, so the center is in this area here, and what, uh, what you're thinking is it heads in that direction, that little bit of water right there, still pretty warm. That's right, and this land here is really not that high. It's pretty low and swampy, so it might not cut down on the speeds of the winds too much. And, and this is actually Veritaria Bay's back over here. There's a lot of water. Yes. Actually, once the thing, uh, southern Louisiana is as much water as it is uh, land, as it turns out. All right, here's the radar now, and that's an interesting little uh, curly cue right here in the center. <laughs> what do you think's happening there? Well, usually when you have a storm, you get a very large eye wall like this. It slowly contracts and gets smaller and smaller. But this storm is doing something very unique I've never seen happen before. It's actually trying to form an eye wall inside a larger eye wall. Very rare. And this is of concern because if you start to get that sort of inner eye wall like that, you can spin up some very strong winds in a hurry. Uh, and the reason is the air is coming in like this, and if it gets caught in that eye wall, it can't kind of get to that one to help it intensify, right? So usually the outer eye wall chokes off the inner eye Usually wall. that's the case, but this storm doesn't go by the rules. We've right. seen that over and over. So, yeah, so, uh, I mean, this really probably is not as much an eye wall as it is some sort of a spiral band with the air perhaps coming in like that. Is Certainly really not a classic eye wall, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, uh, want to talk about one more thing. This looks like an extremely heavy band here moving through Pensacola. We asked Dr. Forbes to talk about that a little bit later on, but that's going to rotate up through the panhandle and also through Alabama and Mississippi. So even on the fringes of it, very strong winds, at least tropical storm force in those bands. Now here's the actual storm surge readings here within the hour. Well, what do you have here? We've got our strongest surge here on the east side of New Orleans at Shell Beach, and you'd expect that because of the wind direction, the counterclockwise flow. And the water level rose by about two feet over the last three hours there. But the tide is just now starting to go out, so I think this rate is going to flatten out a little bit. And then tomorrow morning when they get high tide again, we're going to see a sharp rise in the water again. So we have two things going on. One is the tide is just plain old coming up. The second is the hurricane is pushing the water into that area there. Now this is the area outside the barrier uh, there. So this is, uh, but you have all those areas, those uh, populated areas that are uh, outside the levee. So this is a serious, serious flood situation. We're hoping the people are out of there. That's right. You're going to see a lot of water coming over populated areas that are outside the levees from this kind of a storm surge. Now, Bay St. Louis, which is the western part of Mississippi here, has uh, nearly four feet of water. And that's because the circulation is coming around like that, even though the winds aren't really totally on shore yet. That's right. We're going to expect to see the storm surge there go as high as perhaps seven feet. Yeah, now we should, I guess we should talk about what storm surge is in this kind of measurement, right? So the idea is if you're standing at the beach at high tide, that's how high it is. Well, you must be about 6'2". Yeah, right? yeah, sure. Okay, so if you were standing right at the high tide mark, then it was a six foot storm surge, the water would be that high. So here we're looking at 6.3 feet. So that would be taller than you over the high tide point. That's right. That's a, that's a lot, a lot of water. So this is, this is obviously the threat. And even over here at the top of Mobile Bay, it's already uh, two to three feet. And the winds really are not in an ideal direction yet to push the water in there. So we would expect if the storm moves up over here, those winds come more from the south. In Mobile Bay, it would likely go higher as well. That's true. And those winds are going to be blowing for a very long time. And it's going to be a sustained period where they're going to be getting those high storm surge values from this storm. At least all the way through tomorrow. All right, that's uh, it for here. See you back with the Tropical Update. Back to you, Nick and Ben. All right, thanks so much, guys. Uh, it's only the beginning.